So, I am joined today, once again, with the all-powerful Goff. Uh, this is your fifth or sixth appearance, I think. Uh, it seems to happen quite frequently at the start of the year. And what a way, because this is the first uh, proper podcast of 2023. Um, in all honesty, there was someone book before you, controversially, and I didn't tell you, oh. but they rescheduled. So you've actually, no matter what happens, no matter what I try and do in the universe, you still come out on top. Uh, so, obviously, thank you for coming on, as always, Goff. Well, firstly, you think they rescheduled. I actually hired someone to have their legs broken. So, you know, I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I must be, uh, I must be King Dick, as it were. So, uh, yes, I, I own the first episode of Genuine Chit Chat, which is uh, a, a cool honour to have. But yes, thank you. Thank you, as always, Mike, for having me back on the show. It's always great fun. And you've had such a busy year. You know, each year that I speak to you, it seems like you you top what you did the prior year. You know, for the first few years we were speaking, it would often be sort of one movie uh, or one film and then a couple of sort of projects on the side. And then you launched, obviously, your podcast a couple of years back. And that's been a weekly thing. But last year, for 2022, I think you've had the biggest release of Beer Nuts, I, th I think, since you started for an entire year. So, obviously, we spoke a little bit before, but you've got three movies, two audio pieces, as well as some fun YouTube content, as well as the podcast going on, too. So, uh, tell us, how has 2022 been for Goff and Beer Nuts? Yes, well, as, as you rightly point out, very busy, which is great, because uh, busy is good. So, yeah, we, we've done, uh, as you said, we released three comedy films last year, three audio pieces, and obviously some more podcast episodes and a few other bits and pieces, uh, all within the realms of comedy, which is, of course, my jam. So, uh, yeah, and all uh, everything is always, as always, available at uh, beernutsproductions.com, just the early plug. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so just in case people get bored, you know, five minutes into my chat, thought I'd get the early plug in <laughs> first, but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. As you say, it was it was a great year actually. Twenty twenty two. I I produced. Uh, I like to. What I do is I have. Uh, I'm very goal orientated, so I have my targets all uh, lined up at the start of the year of what I want to achieve, and I hit every one of my goals last year. So I was absolutely pumped. Actually, when uh, the December rolled around and I released the last project, I was really really happy because it meant that I had uh, ticked off all of my goals for twenty twenty two, which is awesome. It's amazing. And also, you actually, you look quite healthy and, and things as well. Not that you ever don't look healthy. I know that you take your fitness and things uh, seriously, and you have done since we started talking and before that. But did you find that, did 2022, was that a year that you focused on your fitness at all? Or was that just a coincidence or anything like that? Just because you look good. Yeah, you look good. <laughs> well, 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 thank you, Mike, and you're welcome to look. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, before... <laughs> but, uh, but no, no, hey, look, I, as... Uh, as the kids say, I just do me. So mm -hmm. I just, uh, I continue just, uh, uh, my diet's pretty average, but I do love, as you said, I do love my exercise. So uh, I've got a sweet tooth. That's my problem, man. I just, uh, I can't stay away from dessert. Every every meal has to end with something sweet or it's just not a meal. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, as you rightly say, I do love my exercise. So I've been training down the gym and doing my thing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a great way to balance Work-life balance, lots of training and exercise, and then lots of work as well. So it's a, it's a good good combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It, it's one of those things. It's, it's always very important to kind of have that sort of a degree of routine. And yeah, fitness and health is always quite an important thing, but it just... It kind of depends on what time of the year you get me. Because if you talk to me in December, I just give up. And I'm just like, nope, from <laughs> December's my, you know, from about the 20th or so, which is normally when Megan uh, finishes work and stuff because she's a teacher. So um, I, and I normally book the time off similar to her. So normally from like 21st, 22nd of December until like the 2nd of January, it's just drink, const like cider all day and a bit of whiskey, just eat my body weight in chocolate and crisps and good stuff. And just, and it's the one time of year that no one judges anyone for gluttony. And I love it. So I'm just like in my pajamas, getting fat, only wearing elasticated trousers, just so it's, everything fits. And then when January comes, it's like, Bleh. okay, I guess I gotta, <laughs> guess I gotta try and make up the stairs without <laughs> heavily breathing again. So I've been trying to be a little bit better uh, for this. But before we delve into uh, the the two main films uh, to speak about for um, 2022. 
I want to ask, you released a YouTube video of a very important announcement. And it's something that is, you know, I didn't really realize it was such an issue in uh, Beer Nuts. And then I saw the video and I realized how important it is uh, to the world of the Beer Nuts listeners. So, and the audience that you have obtained. So it's quite a bit controversial. I hope it doesn't ruin the listenership for your show. But um, the recent YouTube video, it kind of is about a very important subject. So I wonder if you could just delve into that before we get into the more funny stuff of the, the recent should be nuts announcement <laughs> well, well, well that, that 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 is that is true you do raise a valid point and that is that i have a somewhat mild obsession with hawaiian shirts and um <laughs> i i didn't <laughs> I'll, I'll go so when i was a young fellow like 18 19 starting to go to pubs i i loved hawaiian shirts in real life i thought they were the coolest thing ever and me and my mates we'd always uh, you know don the best hawaiian shirts and go to the pub and wonder why we would never get laid. Who would know? <laughs> so, but then I soon realised that they're, they're not overly fashionable Hawaiian shirts, uh, which is very sad. And uh, I let it go. But then when I started making my films, it wasn't. To be quite honest, it really wasn't a conscious choice at all. It's just I would come up with a, a character, and in my brain, I'm like, you know what would suit that character? A Hawaiian shirt. That's what would suit that guy. And so he would wear a Hawaiian shirt. And then after several films, it had occurred to me that in like at least half of my movies, there is somebody wearing a Hawaiian shirt. And so, yes, as you said, I decided to make a fun little uh, promo video uh, demonstrating this fact. Yeah. And you've got a nice little supercut on the YouTube channel where it just goes through. It's almost like a. Uh... It's almost like Goff's greatest hits, but in, instead of actually being your greatest hits, it's just the white shirts in like each of your movies. And it cracked me up. And when I first saw the video, and I'll put a link in the description, um, the first thing I was thinking, I was like, when are we going to get to see Craig? Because I remember Craig uh, wearing a few Hawaiian shirts and he was in one or two of the things. I was like, there he is. There's Craig <laughs> with his Hawaiian shirts. And it was delightful seeing him return as well in some of the films. Um, but before we delve into the film specifically, just for 2022... Obviously, if people haven't already picked up on our multiple other conversations or your accent, you are from Australia. And obviously, I'm from the UK. And in 2020, obviously, restrictions with COVID and lockdown, all that sort of stuff really affected the entertainment industry quite heavily. In 2021, it seemed to relax a bit. There was sort of there was a little bit here and there across the world of uh, sort of similar lockdowns or less so. And I know Australia at certain points was a lot more hot on it and then eased up and things for 2022. Were there many uh, COVID restrictions left and did that impact a Beer Nuts filming or do you think part of the reason that you were so successful with creating so much content, not only because of your own goals and things, but also because it was the first year in a couple of years where there wasn't really the COVID restrictions affecting it? I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that from an Australian perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, the first part of your comment is correct. So there there were... Uh, so. Uh, in 2022, the first film I made was The Education System. So we filmed that uh, the first week of March. And there two things happened. Uh, firstly, uh, that was the biggest film I made because there was 58 actors in that mm. particular film. And the day before, three of them pulled out with COVID. Oh, wow. So, uh, and one of, two of them were easy to replace because it was just sort of one line. Uh, so they were fine. I could just call someone in, get them costumed up, and, and in they went. Uh, but the other one had a big role. And uh, so luckily for me, uh, what I did was, again, it's just on the fly, I had to get uh, an actress who'd already done a role in the film. I had said to her, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap it around. I'm going to get you to do this other role. Can you learn this amount of dialogue in the next 14 hours and to her credit she did and well done her and I got a different actor then so I had to actually make four changes so I had a different actor because her original part was just literally again one line so I was like okay I'll get this new actor to do her bit and get her to do the other actor but yeah so that was as you could imagine a giant pain in my ass having three actors pull out the day before with COVID because I don't have big budgets i just can't go oh well can't do it now i'll film in a week i just i just don't have the budgets to be able to do that because i've got to pay people so uh yeah that was uh insane that that and also the other because i did say two things the other thing that happened 
which wasn't COVID related, was that where I live on the Gold Coast decided to have flooding rains. And by flooding rains, I mean the makeup artist that we use, Maddie, she lives about an hour south uh, of where I live. And so she drove up for the shoot, but she actually couldn't get home because their roads have been cut because of floodwaters. Wow. So, like, it was uh, – so, yeah, so on that particular shoot, we had monsoonal rains – and uh, COVID hit us, uh, so that was fun. Uh, with, uh, with with what was uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Actually, this might make you chuckle. Um, so I was getting because uh, it was a two day shoot, and both days were like the flooding rains. Like we shot on a Monday and Tuesday, and the rain started on the Saturday. Uh, that's hence why we were flooded by the Tuesday. Anyway. I was getting a little bit annoyed with uh, the cast and crew constantly checking the rain radar because, like, whenever it would just sort of ease slightly, we'd race outside and film any outside stuff that we needed to. And I don't recall saying this, but I know me, so I don't deny that I said it because it sounds like something I would say. And uh, so uh, Pete, the production assistant on that film, and Kale, one of the actors, they said, oh, uh, let's just check the radar. And apparently I looked at them and I said, hey, I'm the fucking radar. I'll tell you what's going to happen and when. That's what's going on. <laughs> so uh, apparently I'm a, a, a rain radar now as well as being a writer and director and so forth. But you did you did ask about COVID. Um, uh, yeah, so there was that incident for that particular film. It didn't really affect anything else through 2022 um i still through 2020 and 2021 i still managed to produce quite a bit of work because look at the end of the day you got to find ways of getting around it without obviously doing things that are illegal and breaking laws and whatnot mm. i didn't have like sex parties at number 10 downing street or anything <laughs> like that <laughs> as other people may have i i instead made sure that everybody was kept safe and did the right things but also made sure that I didn't go bankrupt as well because you got to figure out ways to get around things. So I'm sure we discussed previously, like in 2020, I made lots of audio tracks because mm -hmm. I had access to a recording studio. So we could get the actors in one at a time and record their bits and edit it all together. 2021, as you say, there were still some restrictions. So, for example, I could only have a certain amount of people on film sets. So it just meant the films that I made had to be smaller or we had to film certain scenes and then get rid of people and bring in other people and film other scenes. So, uh, but then obviously 2022 rolled around and we were able to get back to some kind of normal. At the beginning of the year, there were a few lingering restrictions, but by the time sort of uh, April, May rolled around, there weren't really any. So we were sweet from then on in. So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. And I know that a lot of my other uh, friends in various areas of the world and in the uh, entertainment industry and things like that, they've all been affected differently. But it seems like 2022, aside from all the other stuff that's been going on in the world that we won't delve into, but just from a COVID perspective, at least, it seems that, yeah, it, it's easing up a bit, obviously, for people getting the illness and, you know, uh, the fat fatalities and things. But also the rest of the world just the, the restrictions easing so entertainment wise everything's kind of all gung-ho again um so i'm glad to hear that uh you know everything worked out and you've got a couple of fun stories as well which is always that's what you want from something if something happens it's an inconvenience or interrupts some sort of production you at least want a story out of it which you've got so <laughs> that's fantastic Absolutely. so if we delve into so you've got two stories um you've got or two films you've got couples therapy and kidnapping are the two main ones i know you mentioned the education system earlier but uh, we'll focus on couples therapy and kidnapping and both of them are, you know, couples therapy is a little bit longer than kidnapping was, and they're both quite different films. They're, they're both obviously comedy, but I, one of them I describe as, for the majority of it, I was like belly laughing. I was full on laugh out loud, cackling at a couple of parts that I've got, and I won't spoil those parts. I'll, I'll hint at them so anyone else has seen them knows what I'm talking about, but I won't spoil the jokes. Uh, and then the other one I found... Um, was more it was humorous and it was fun to watch but it was also I was, I was more brought into the story in a sense so the story one was more so the kidnapping and it was a very clever fun concept and it was humorous to watch whereas i found couples therapy it was more kind of sketch related and so in those sketches there are a couple that i found were absolutely brilliant so if we focus on couples therapy first um i also think am i right in thinking couples therapy was released 
earlier than kidnapping, or am I getting those? No, you got, you got it the wrong way around. Yes, ah, so couples wow. therapy was released in November, and uh, the kidnapping was released, I believe, it was August. So I yes. see, because when um, obviously when I when I get them, I listen to them basically at the same or watch them rather at the sort of same time. So I was like, I don't know which one comes first. Let's go alphabetically. So that was my complete <laughs> stab in the dark. So for couples therapy, well, if we um, we'll do. Um, chronologically then just for ease so we'll start with the kidnapping things and one thing i found interesting about the kidnapping um which i'll let you speak at the concept even though the title was fairly self-explanatory one thing i found in it was am i right in thinking this is one of the few uh beer nuts films that you've made substantial amounts of jokes about your blindness because i remember years ago when we were speaking you were like i don't generally make that many jokes about blindness because i think you said it was kind of like you want to be funny outside of the blindness you don't want that just to be you're the funny blind guy you want to be a funny person who also is legally blind so i found it interesting then that you really leaned into the sort of the blind jokes and things so i wondered if you could tell us the premise of the kidnapping even though self-explanatory and then about the self-deprecating humor of that element that from my understanding you haven't really delved into heavily in the past as much yes well yes you're quite right on all fronts uh, so yes um uh, as you say the kidnapping uh, which uh, i kidnap a uh, a lovely young lady uh, but um, it doesn't all go to plan, as uh, as as one would probably assume, considering it's a Beer Nuts Productions film. It takes a kind of a bit of a left hand turn uh, <laughs> halfway through along the way, um, and uh, it's sort of my version. It's the best I can do at a romantic comedy. So I was, uh, I had a friend of mine uh, who um, I used to the office I used to work out of. I used to rent from her, and also I've used her house a lot in my films. Uh, uh, so you, you'd actually recognise her house, Mike, because you've seen quite a few of my films, so you would know her house. Uh, and she's a good mate of mine. Uh, and so she called me up one day, and she's like, Goff, you, your films are really funny and stuff, but, you know, I'm a girl. I want a bit of romance. When are you going to do a bit of romance? So I thought, okay. And then I had another friend of mine who said uh, – I think you'd play a good villain. Why don't you play a villain in one of your films? So I thought, okay, I'll do a romantic comedy where I play a villain. So that was uh, that was sort of my attempt. So apparently, I'm now doing a film by request. It would seem, <laughs> but, but but yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of how that all came about. And you are quite right as well. So I, I was about or oh, about a page into writing the script, and it became very aware to me that my eyesight's going to have to get a mention just because of the nature of my interactions with the person that I've kidnapped. I mean, it's not something that can be kept st- secret when you kidnap somebody and you're, you know, you're uh, texting the, the family to get the money and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's going to come up. It just, it's, it's going to happen. Your lack of eyesight's going to be a thing. So if it's going to be a thing, then we need to include it. And uh, that was... Uh, the, the lines that I used in the film were the best ways I felt to uh, to include it, basically. But yes, it was very obvious to me early on that it was something that, because you are right, it's not something that I usually talk about or mention because I don't feel it, that it's relevant. But on this particular occasion, it was absolutely relevant. So it needed to be mentioned and if it needed to be done humorously because that's the plot of the film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, I found it quite interesting because obviously you try and do... you. There's common threads that go through the majority of your films and your sort of style of humour, but also the the sort of edges of it get tweaked depending on what kind of story you're telling. You know, there's a lot ones which are just social commentary and you're just being and it's just purely satirical. There's other ones that are kind of more sketch comedy and things, which is more what couples therapy I found was. But then there's other ones which are like a funny concept in itself and you kind of go from there. Like um, I can't remember what the name of it is, but the one where I think it's Kale and someone else they're having dinner. And it's that one where it's just that constant, it's the almost, not quite Groundhog Day, but it's the same scenes again and changed and tweaked and things. So you've done a variety yes. of, of ideas. So I thought that when you started making the a lot of the blind jokes and self-deprecating ones, I was like, oh, this is this is an angle that I haven't heard from Goff before, even though I know obviously he is uh, capable of doing it. So when you were doing that, I did find it really added to things, because it added to the character. Because as you say, in prior roles, you're just a guy i like the joke that you're and i think some of your uh friends and actors have made the same joke which is 
the goth in every beer nuts is the same person. He's the only character that basically doesn't change. So he's just I mean, the weirdest life ever. And like, you can always choose which film goes where. Like the kidnapping could be right at the end where he's just, every other film of where he's like messed something up is like a culmination to what happens in the kidnapping. And I just find that in all the other jokes and things that you make, you, as you say, it's not relevant if you're blind or not. If you're just playing a guy who's a bit of an arse in a relationship, the blindness isn't affecting that but as you say when you're kidnapping someone and then you're trying to text the family and you're holding the phone quite close to your face if you didn't make a point of that then it would seem weird and then if you were trying to hold the phone away from yourself and act without it being true that might become across as jarring as well so i just thought the way you kind of did that and some of the reoccurring jokes i found were very funny and worked really well in the confines of that script well that's good (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a good result then no, but yeah <laughs> not much more i can add but no no you, you're quite right look like i say it, you are right uh, because it did occur to me i could hold the phone down low and but i've never text anybody like that because i've never done it so i don't know how and you're right it would look weird because i don't know how to do it so uh yeah it, it was very obvious that that's that's how i had to play that and to be honest as well, I actually thought, kind of like you alluded to, um, there's a little bit of social commentary in that film in regards to disability as well, which uh, I think uh, was nice to put in there just as something different. It's not something that's going to you know, bombard all my film scripts or anything like that, far from it, but it was just nice to you know, sneak a little bit of uh, social commentary in there as well. That's always a, a nice thing to do. Yeah, the blind people can do everything that... Um, I know that you said it in a specific way and then another character repeats it, but then when the other character repeats it, they say uh, along the lines of, blind people can do anything else normal people can do. And then your character's like, I appreciate the sentiment. You probably didn't word it in the best way. <laughs> and I just thought, when I heard her say normal people, I was like, I don't think he said it that way. And then your character goes, yeah, it's not quite... It's not normal people. It's not It's not blind and normal. Well, just that little, that little line cracked me up. It wasn't even like the central point of that, like, in that scene that wasn't even the main joke but the fact that you were just like oh well you tried but you know they're still not great it was that, that really tickled me i really like that part well you'd be surprised to how many times you you like in real life i get stuff like that you know like uh, uh well you know normal people and well, no, i'm just i am normal it's just i can't see there's a very clear difference but uh people are ignorant so uh mm. that's uh, that's why that uh, that line came about because that's actually been said in real life so we thought we'd uh put that in just to uh you know make it clear that that's a thing that happens so yes so with the kidnapping obviously um it's it's something that there's one part at the end which once again i'm not going to spoil the plot itself but the very very last shot there is um an image which is like a business card and i won't say exactly what the business card says but i will say that the address on it crack me up (laughs) it's the last little joke of the whole film and i'll just read it out just uh, for like parts of it just so it doesn't get fully spoiled but on the business card it's the address on it is hot air avenue knobs end 6969 and i was like i read that and i was like i bet goff was giggling to himself so much when he wrote that i bet he was absolutely (laughs) cracked up and am i right in thinking that (laughs) yes yes you are yes (laughs) because because i'm a child so yes (laughs) It made me laugh, to be fair to you. Um, and I, I and, just, Go ahead, sorry. And there is... Uh, I, oh, yeah, so there is... Because uh, when I came up with that address, obviously I worked backwards. I thought the postcode has to be 696969. 69, 69, <laughs> and then I thought the, there is a place... When I was actually living in the UK, there is a place just out of Blackpool called uh, Notsend. Uh, and I just thought, uh, and that that occurred to me that if knots had have been knobs, that would have been fantastic. And I'm I'm quite sure, knowing England like I do, I bet you if we did do a Google search, there would be a knobs end somewhere in the UK. I guarantee it. There has to be, man, because you guys have the greatest names for everything. <laughs> so, uh, but yes, you are quite right. Uh, when I decided that a business card was required. Uh, I came up with the address and I sent it to Ilya, who did up the business card for me. And uh, she just uh, emailed it back with a little message saying, I'm not surprised at all that this (laughs) came across my email. So, yes. Yeah, I, I think that Knobs End is almost certainly a place in the UK. I'm going to have, see if I can uh, find it somewhere. There is a place near Manchester called Knob End, without the K. <laughs> there you go. Literally just N-O-B space E-N-D, which cracks me up. Uh, and I used to... Um, 
right near where I live, um, there was a road called um, Butts Road, which is funny in itself. <laughs> but off Butts Road, there's Butts Close. But if you read it, <laughs> close and close are the same word. So it actually reads as Butts Close. So it's almost like a command. When you go into this place, you've got to close your butt. And I just always found that quite entertaining because I, too, am a child. <laughs> so... Um, <clears throat> Before delving into uh, couples therapy, I just want to ask, there's one more thing about the kidnapping I noticed. When I was when I was on uh, your YouTube, which obviously I recommend everyone go to Beer Nuts Productions YouTube, link will be in the description and stuff. There's loads of cool bonus content on there and behind the scenes docos and things like that. Um, but obviously there's a couple of trailers. Did you? I'm sure you did notice this, but the kidnapping trailer went seemingly semi-viral because the amount of views that it's had is... Like eclipsing a lot of the other views of some of the other content just on YouTube. Do you do you know why that happened, or is it just one of those weird things where it's just there's an attractive uh, woman in the thumbnail tied to a chair? It says kidnapping on it. Do, do you know what how it kind of picked up wind, or is it just one of those random, almost freak occurrences that's obviously beneficial to get you guys exposure? Well, I think it's because of the huge amount of talent and uh, hilarity <laughs> that's involved in the film, Mike. I think that's obvious. Of course, of course. Like, I also think if I was to have a second guess, I think it's what you said at the start, which is there's a very attractive woman tied to a chair and a thumbnail, mm-hmm. and uh, men are perverts. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I, that think, is. I think that helped tremendously. But, it, it, hey, look, it helped me get downloads. So, you know, it did the job. So, um, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it was great. I, I, I saw that uh, – it, it was uh, rolling along, and I'm like, oh, "When's this going to end?" But it never did. So it was uh, it was very cool. I was very pleased indeed that uh, yeah, it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And obviously, uh, I don't know. I'm not a tech guy. That's not my my go. I'm the creative one. I'm not the tech one. But obviously, uh, the more hits that one got, the more hits they all got because it sort of trickled down. So there are people that watched it genuinely and were like, "Oh, okay, that's really funny." I'll download the film and then I'll watch another trailer and, oh, okay, that's pretty cool too. So, yeah, that that uh, it helped on a few levels. So uh, I can't give you a specific reason as to why. <laughs> I've, I've got my guesses, as you know. But, yep. um, look, it it, uh, it was great and uh, it's a shame that it doesn't happen more often, let's well, yeah, say. That's what I thought as well. I was like, oh, that's amazing. I was like... And they could, like, there's like, that, that trailer is good and it's fun, but I was like, oh, the, oh, you know, I love the behind the scenes docos. They absolutely crack me up. And so my only little disappointment was, ah, oh, there wasn't one for couples therapy or the kidnapping. But I do understand that the behind the scenes stuff takes far more work. It's almost like the work, because I remember when we spoke about it, I think in the last conversation, um, it was the amount of work that went into one of them. I think it was, it was, it was the one where there's a lot of sort of weddings and things. Um, yeah, yeah, the wedding film. That, yeah, that yeah. had a really cool behind the scenes doco, but yeah. They, they're ex- reasonably expensive to make and they are a lot of work. Uh, I do, I'm with you. I really like them. Uh, and I think it's one of those things where they're slow burns. Mm-hmm. So I think they work over time. They don't work immediately either, which uh, isn't helpful, but I, they do help over time. So uh, as more people get onto the Beer Nuts Productions website and they watch them, they dig them and they like them, but it's not something like that's going to go viral like the kidnapping promo did. So it swings and roundabouts, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had more money, and I would absolutely do behind the scenes docos for all of them because I actually really like them. I I agree with you a hundred percent. I think they're. I'm one of those nerds that back when DVDs were a thing and there were the DVD extras, I'd go straight to the extras and and watch all the little featurettes and stuff that they made because I find that shit really interesting. So uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I, I think they're really cool too. So. Uh, there probably will be a few more coming down the line at some point. Uh, don't know when, but I would assume there would be more because I like them. So, uh, and I'm the boss. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's but also. The, the, Ooh, go ahead, sorry. No, I, I was just going to say. So, but there are some cool behind the scenes docos. Uh, I know that uh, yeah, the wedding one has one. Uh, Book club has one, and also uh, Christian Victoria. Uh, that film also has a really cool behind the scenes documentary so those three absolutely exist and hopefully there shall be more yeah and it's also i think with with the kidnapping for example because the uh the recording of it and the whole idea of it is very um insular it's basically just realistically without saying too much about the plot it's mainly just two characters and it's in primarily one location there are other parts and things but it's it's a lot of dialogue and talking and things so the behind the scenes of that video would kind of just be sort of bloopers and outtakes. Whereas when you've done certain other films where there's a lot more scenes, a lot more actors, when you've got behind the scenes doco and you've got like five locations and you've got like 
10 people who've been involved you only really need like a minute from each one and you make a cool little thing whereas when it's all in one location with just two people it limits how much one can do so maybe it's an idea of after a few more films if you've only got like a minute or so you could be like 2022 and 2023 have been nuts and it can just be like a half behind the scenes half promo with just slithers of little bits in between or something like that but i understand because when i used to be and more, and more hawaiian shirts yes exactly always more hawaiian shirts 100 <laughs> percent. um but it's like with when i used to make music videos for bands and when i used to have a youtube channel it's one of those things where people even with podcast promotion and things like that they go oh won't you just make a promo and it's like well audio if i'm just doing audio and i need to make a promo it for two minutes of audio you have to record it loads of times to make sure it sounds okay sometimes you're like right out a thing you're going to record for your promo and then you read it out and you go this doesn't work at all so you have to start again so even with just the audio format it's difficult and from my more video um days with youtube and all that sort of stuff trying to make a promo for video stuff it takes ages and to make one that's really good and interesting and to sift through often hours of footage for minutes it's just such a huge time hole really and i think a lot of people don't realize that so i love your behind the scenes docos i want more but i also understand as you said they are actually surprisingly a lot of work to put together and you have to sift through so it's like here's loads of footage and when you're doing like uh comedy films you go here's all the footage the best takes are at this point and this point at this point you go okay we'll look through them kind of pick and choose the best when it's behind the scenes it's like here's hours of rubbish find the diamonds in the dirt and you're like but i have to watch two hours of basically bad takes just to find which bad take works the best in behind the scenes thing is that kind of idea yes well, well yes that's all but yes again well done yes not much i can add you are quite <laughs> right they it, it is it is one of those things when uh, it, it's funny it did uh, when you were saying putting it all together when we're actually uh, editing a film scott and i I always give him uh, 24 hours to put the footage in and I always just tell him because on set I'm very clear on what I like. So I will always, once I get the take I like, we finish. So I always say to Scott, which helps him tremendously, start with the last take first, always mm -hmm. go backwards. And then if when we get in there, if there is something wrong with that take, then we can look at the others. But always start with the last take first, put it in the timeline and when I get in, we'll have a chat about it. But, um, yeah, so that makes his job a lot easy because once I get a take I like, I stop. So, And there's no need to watch things that you don't want, whereas, like you say, with the behind-the-scenes doco, you do have to actually go through the behind-the-scenes stuff because you, you're not paying attention to what's going on because you're focused on making the actual film. So you do actually have to look at that two hours of footage to try and, and just cherry-pick the bits that you like because – you weren't thinking about that at the time because you've focused on the main main course, so to speak. Exactly. Yeah, I completely agree. And so with that in mind, we'll move from the kidnapping onto couples therapy, which of the two, I, I preferred couples therapy. I think they're both a lot of fun and really cool, but couples therapy, because some of the jokes just really made me laugh out loud. Um, and so with this one, obviously, the kidnapping, your idea for that was someone told you basically to make a rom-com. And so in your own twisted beer nuts way, you kind of did. So with couples therapy, it's almost like the anti-rom-com. It's, it's like the arguably it starts off seeming like a quite a romantic idea. And then as it goes on, it's like this is the least romantic beer nuts uh, <laughs> video probably film that there is. So how did that come about? Was there something specific or were you just like, well, I made the kidnapping. Let's kind of do the opposite. <laughs> well, so if you recall, I'm pretty sure you've seen Book Club, which was mm. another sort of sketch comedy film that I did. That sold really, really well. So I thought, well, uh, people obviously enjoy the sketch comedy sort of aspect. So what I'll do is I'll do the same thing again, uh, just in a different sort of way. So I thought, uh, what's something else where we can incorporate sketch comedy? And it's a therapy session. You know, she did this. And then you cut to a sketch of her doing something stupid. And then, oh, yeah, but he did this. And then you can cut to a sketch of him doing something stupid. And then I didn't want to make it the same as book club. So then I did a nice little twist at the end, which uh, makes it completely different. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully people people like it. So yeah, I did find that it was it was bizarre. It was cool and weird, and I like weird different things. But it was it was so meta, and I don't think beer nuts they you tow the line of meta. There's the odd time where there's a little bit of meta stuff, but normally it's when you're involved. It's normally you being 
goff of beer nuts and it's kind of the the in joke you're once again you're the run the same character and everything and you're probably the only person who realizes you're actually in a film but it was i won't spoil what happened but it was just quite entertaining the way you did it and it was like this is out of left field and it just kept going and i was like okay <laughs> it was very interesting i like i like whenever you experiment and you try different things i always appreciate the effort because as you say although book club is great if the structure is too similar to something else you don't want to just keep making the same material you want to challenge yourself you want to challenge your actors you want to challenge your own directing and writing so i really appreciate your efforts to do something uh different with that one as well yeah no well, yeah well like i say you know the last thing you want is people going onto the beer nuts productions website and going oh it's the same as what he did last time so you want you need to keep it fresh and interesting so people like the sketches so i gave them some uh, silly sketches and then yes we took a, a severe uh, left-hand turn and did something completely different for the last third of the film. And, uh, yeah, I, I also like the fact uh, it was a conscious choice to make that go as long as I possibly could. I wanted to to milk and squeeze every last drop of that because uh, what's mentioned in the last third of the film is mentioned throughout the first two-thirds of the film, but it's done, obviously, in a very different way. So uh, without trying to give too much away, but, yeah, so the... There was a couple of conscious choices there to make it a different and also to sort of uh, juxtaposition, I guess, of uh, one way of looking at a situation as opposed to another way of looking at the same situation. So, yeah. Mm. it's very well done and i want to say as well like the the actors you have in all your beer nuts things they always do really really well i think we've spoken about uh, kale before and also uh, obviously craig i love seeing craig he cracks me up whenever he's in it and he appears in couples therapy um and no uh disparage or any negative feelings to anyone in the other beer nuts things but i will say that in couples therapy i found that uh the main actress um ashley rayner i feel like she's maybe the best actress i've seen in beer nuts and i want to clarify i'm not nothing it's any other actresses or any of the actors on beer nuts they're all done such a great job but in that film specifically i've really noticed the subtleties where she like she has a lot of body language to her acting so obviously there's the facial expressions and a degree of body language but in certain scenes you see her her body language change a lot and her when she uses her hands the way she kind of uh touches her hands at certain points or when she kind of sits up and then just brushes her uh, dress off a little bit and things i really noticed that her acting specifically i specifically wrote it down of just i need to write down this actress's name because i just thought she did such a good job of all of the things that were requested of her in the confines of that film and i didn't know if you if you had any comments of that if she was like yeah she was delightful or mike move on she was a bit of a pain <laughs> I, I assume not the latter and you wouldn't say that on a podcast anyway but i just thought i want to highlight her and i just thought she did such a good job oh no she's a raging bitch no i'm kidding i'm <laughs> kidding obviously i'm just <laughs> i'm kidding she's she's a delightful human being she really is but it, it was uh, it was the first time that I'd worked with her, so uh, I'd not worked with her before. And as you point out, it was a very difficult role to play because in one sketch she's got to be sexy, in another sketch she's got to be angry, in another sketch she's got to be something else. So she's got like everything that she does. It's a completely different personality that she's playing, which is really tricky to do. So I struggled uh, a lot to find an actress to do it. I, I went through – there were three audition days, and I'm not going to hire somebody I'm not happy with. So I just kept uh, auditioning and auditioning until I found the right person. And then Ashley came along, and she crushed the audition. Because other actresses would come in, and they would nail, like, one sketch, but then fall flat with the other one because they just couldn't get – like, if they needed to be bitchy in one sketch, they, they killed it but then they needed to be sexy in the next one. They couldn't do it. So it was, uh, yeah, Ashley was the only one that came in and sort of nailed each sketch. And I think it helps that she sort of understood uh, the joke of the whole thing and also understood that in each sketch she needs to be a different person. She's not playing, essentially, she's not really playing the same character, even though she is. She kind of isn't because they're flashbacks and memories of people's thoughts and obviously they can be distorted. So uh, she she needed to think of it as playing a different character in each sketch, essentially, and that's what she did, and she did it tremendously well. As you said, she was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I, I thought she did a great job. Yeah, and I think couples therapy, um, I think every 
Beanot's film you make, you learn something from the last one. I, I wouldn't say it quite as uh, cleanly as every film is better than the last because it's different aspects make me enjoy different ones more, certain concepts. Obviously, Book Club was one of my favourites. And I really like sketch comedy in when it's done right, which I think you do a lot of it right, to clarify. But, you know, I think we've both discussed before, like I'm a massive fan of Monty Python, but Monty Python, I think, are some of the greatest sketch artists in the world. But if you watch their whole series of all their sketches... Only about 10 or 20% of them land. You watch series one and two, that's where all the big hitters are of Monty Python, Spam, and Dead Parrot Sketch, and all those things. You watch the third and fourth seasons, which I have on DVD. They are awful. They cannot do it. From series three and four of Monty Python, there's not a single joke in there you'll have heard referenced anywhere, because it's just nonsense. And I find that with sketch comedy, it's quite easy to be like, let's do something weird, funny, and random. And then you go, okay, but what's the joke? What's, what's funny about this? And I find that with you, when you do sketch comedy the vast majority of the time, what you set out to do, it really lands. And I think a lot of the time with sketch comedy, you have to get the mix of, there's a degree of strangeness to it a lot of the time, and a degree of unpredictability, which I think a lot of comedy comes from being unpredictable. But you also can't just be so unpredictable and out of left field that nothing makes sense. And I found that you got the balance in couples therapy of the sketches so right, because there's one sketch, and I won't spoil it for people, but I'll just say the phonetic alphabet. And in that sketch, when it started, I was like, oh, I see where this is going. And I was like, this is humorous, but I see where it's going. But then the last bit killed me. I think it made me laugh more than any part. And I won't say what happens, but when you say your line, it literally it comes out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, God, it li- I love it. So I just thought, with the sketch comedy elements of, of uh, Couples Therapy, I think it may be my favourite Beer Nuts film, if not in the top three. Well, great. That's good. Again. <laughs> 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 More sketch comedy for Mike. I've I've made a mental note, but uh, no. Look, uh, I, I uh, I'm aware, obviously, of the uh, the sketch you're talking about. I, I like. Look, I'm a massive fan of sketch comedy, and I really love doing it. Uh, and I love writing it, uh, and it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, it is difficult to direct the actors sometimes because they're not. Uh, well, they're not comedians; they're actors. Not that that makes a difference, but they're also, it's not something that's done regularly. You very rarely, I mean, in 2022, I can't really think of a good sketch comedy show on television or on Netflix or on one of the streaming services. I can't really think of, I mean, there's been some amazing sketch comedy programs over the years, no question about it, but I can't think of a recent one, one that jumps out to me that's been in the last three or four years that really jumps out at me so it's not done very regularly is my point Mm -hmm. so therefore the actors aren't really used to doing it so i've got to sort of direct it more as i I sort of direct it more as a short film within a film so that that way it makes a bit more sense to the actors if that makes sense so uh, yeah it's it's not the easiest thing to get the act and some of the actors when i audition them they just don't don't get it so you know obviously if they don't get it they're not going to get the role because they're not going to be able to deliver it properly but um yeah it's not the easiest thing in the world to direct um but i I love it i love doing it it's a lot of fun and that's why i I liked couples therapy you know because there's some sketches in there that there's one particular sketch which i wrote years and years and years and years and years ago that i've been holding and holding and holding and being desperate to put in, which was the very first sketch that involves a sex worker. And uh, I'd written that sketch forever ago. And when I came up with the idea of couples therapy, I was like, oh, I finally get a chance to use this sketch because it (laughs) fits in just beautifully. So I was really happy that I got to use that one. But um, yeah, because I I just, uh, sometimes I'll just have a a thought and just type down a a funny little sketch or whatever and just save it and put it to one side, which... uh, is what happened with that particular sketch, and I was able to shoehorn it in. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to write and a lot of fun to do. Yeah, and all of the sketches in there, I found them really funny and in different ways. And I'll say one other little hint of my other favourite one of the sketch, which was simple, brilliant, but I loved it, which was the um, the bank and the house. That's all I'll say about that. That one, <laughs> uh, that killed me. I love that. It's simple but brilliant. It, it, it just from well, the start. It, again, so there's... Uh, uh, I'm not really wrecking that much. There's uh, in my local area, obviously, um, you know, I, I uh, walk around and whatnot because it's my local area and a house got bulldozed and there was an empty block of land, but they, for some bizarre reason, they'd kept a fence. And I thought, that's odd. 
and it made me chuckle. And so I went home and I typed up that sketch. So <laughs> it was more that the location was there and gave me the idea and I typed up the sketch. And again, when I came up with the idea of couples therapy, I was like, ah, that little sketch that I wrote a few years back, I can use that because that block of land still exists. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it worked out well. And it, uh, it turned out well on film, actually. I was, I was pleased with how that one uh, came across. It, uh, it looked good on, uh, on screen. It definitely did. Yeah, it was fantastic. And so I want to ask as well, as we, we'll start to wrap up here, but with obviously yourself as an actor, I know that sort of very early on in your career, you're more of a stand-up comedian and then more of like a comedian in sort of writing and things, obviously with a lot of the things you've been creating, but in all beer nut stuff, you are an actor. And I think, I may be assuming this, but I seem to recall maybe you saying, yeah, well, you're an actor because also you don't have to pay you like you would <laughs> an actor. So I was like, well, yeah, I'm in my own films because I know how, what I'm doing. I know that the way I should uh, do certain inflections, but also I'm cheap. Uh, so it's like, I've, I've fairly certain you've said something like that before. So I want to ask like with, uh, as each film goes on, do you find that you as an actor have been improving as well going on and it's easier or you're like i've just plateaued and just having a laugh with it like i wondered how you perceive yourself as an actor because where you're obviously directing and writing is your primary focus of beer nuts and the acting of yourself is kind of a secondary thing but i don't think i've really asked you much about your own acting when it comes to uh especially being critical of yourself as well well yes i'm i'm quite the thespian you're quite right it is true <laughs> I'm doing Shakespeare in the park next week. <laughs> no, not at all. No, uh, I don't look, I never consider myself to be an actor. Um, when I'm writing it, uh, I know what voice suits me because my acting range is probably limited. I'm not really challenged my acting range at all, uh, but I would assume it's pretty limited. So usually my, my, the things I'm, and are usually about five degrees either side of my own personality. So, you know, because I'm a bit of a bit of a dick in real life, so it's easy to play one, I suppose. But um, I, I don't look, I, I don't really consider myself an actor, but what I, I do very carefully consider what I do in my own films because, again, I'm aware of my own range. So I make sure that, like, I if, they're, if it's a presenting thing, I'm good at doing the presenting role. Uh, with couples therapy, I was actually playing a character. Actually, kidnapping, I was actually playing a character as well. But uh, it, with those ones, uh, I knew what role I was going to play. So when I'm writing the script, I can sort of tailor it to my own voice and my own style. So uh, that that helps a lot. And like you also said, I also know because I wrote it, I know exactly how I want everything to be delivered. So I... It's funny, actually, when I'm directing the actors as well, if I'm not getting exactly what I'm after, I'll often give them an example. I'll do their line for them and it help, and they'll see how I deliver it and then they deliver it back. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I I, I, th I think it's because I'm so uh, – uh, what's the right word? I, I'm so fussy with my scripts when I'm writing them that everything is so clear to me and in my brain – so when it comes time for me to actually film it and I'm to be on camera, I can just do it because I know exactly because I've, I've had it in my brain for like the last six months. So I'm able to just bust it out. And as you say, I also come cheap. So it's, uh, <laughs> it, it does work on a number of levels. But yeah, so it, it's nothing that I've taken a great deal of time. I mean, I've never really done, I've never done acting classes or anything of that nature. When I was a young fella, I did a few TV commercials. I was with an agency and I did a couple of TV commercials. But again, they would send me the script and I would just make it my own. I would just uh, do it to my own sort of personality and my own way of doing it. And if they liked it in the audition, that's great. If they didn't, they didn't. So that's fine. So, yeah, that's kind of how I've always sort of looked at it. I've never been – I've never really considered myself to be an actor as such. I'm just, uh, you know – it's, I don't know, I do find it fun. It is fun to do, uh, and I do enjoy doing it. It really is. It's a cool thing to do. But I, I often wonder, actually, if someone, you know, gave me a script and said, I want you to play this character in this film, something that I've got no creative control over, I often wonder how I would go, if I would be any good at it or if I would be terrible at it or if I, if I would be able to make their vision come true or if I would have to turn it to 
more like me or I, I often wonder how I would go with someone else's script where they're the director and I have to follow their vision and do it their way. I often wonder how I would go with something like that. It would be a, a, a curious thing, I think, but uh, no one's actually offered me an acting job, so <laughs> I can't answer that question as of yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, brilliant. I mean, with Be An Artist then for 2023, obviously you said uh, at the start of our conversation about the goals that you were setting for yourself and you managed to achieve them all for 2022, obviously with three films coming out, two audio productions as well as your podcast and everything else. What do you have that you can tell us as goals for 2023? Is it quite similar to 2022? Because obviously that's quite a lot of content. You know, three films in a year is, is a lot. So is that gem are you trying to raise the stakes even further? Or are you like, what I achieved in 2022 is probably the limit? Like, What's your kind of idea of, of at least as far as you can tell us, the idea for the next year? Yeah, well, it's, it, it is always about making as much content as I possibly can. Uh, but a lot of it, of course, also depends on the size of the project. So, like, mm. for example, the wedding film that I made in 2021 was a massive film, and that was six months prep work to get that one going. I did have another film that I released during that time as well, but, like, it was a massive film. So it does also depend on the size of the film. Uh, I mean, the, the kidnapping, as you saw, was a reasonably small uh, film, uh, in regards to intimate, in regards to how it was uh, produced and how many people were involved and the couples therapy wasn't massive either. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it a lot depends on the size of the project and what I've got uh, in mind for script wise and all that sort of stuff. But I do have a script that I've got ready to go. Uh, so I've just got to tick a few more boxes with a few pre-production things. I've had a few uh, setbacks uh, so far, which haven't gone my way, but that's okay. These things happen. Uh, so that's put uh, me delayed a little bit on what I would have liked to have been at uh, at this current stage, but that's okay. Like I say, that's just life. Um, so uh, I will jump those hurdles and I will figure out a way to do that, which I will and kind of have, and then I will proceed. So I haven't been able to set up much of my budgets and goals because I'm still waiting to hear back from a few folks who are still on Christmas, New Year sort of break, which is a very boring answer to your question and probably nothing <laughs> that you were you were after. Uh, as I'm speaking, I'm realising how ridiculous this answer sounds. But, um, uh, yeah, look, I, I know what I do want to achieve. I don't like to promote too much in advance because I, 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 uh, I'm not superstitious as such. That said... Uh, there's been a few times where I've been interviewed on podcasts and stuff and they're like, what's coming up? And I'm like, oh, I've got this great idea for this film and I'm going to make it and it's going to be terrific. And then something terrible happens and it all goes pear-shaped. And <laughs> uh, and so I, I sort of jinx myself sometimes. So I don't like saying too much, but there is more hilarity on the way. So so just uh, make sure you stay tuned to all the beer nut socials and all that sort of stuff. And there will be updates forthcoming once uh, once things start rolling along. So, yes. Wonderful. It's always good hearing from you, Goff. And it's always great hearing like what sort of stuff you have got planned. And I know as a creator as well, I always say with podcasts, like at the end of the any of the podcasts I have um, audio-wise, I always say at the end, this is what's coming up. I've got this recorded, that recorded. The only times I ever mention who I've got, uh, what episodes I've got coming up, is either if I've already got the recording done or if the guest has come on again. Whenever you and I agree something, I say months in advance. I'm like, oh, me and Goff are going to chat again because I'm like, we've spoken so many times. I'm not worried you're going to pull out. Or if you did for whatever reason, we would just reschedule. It wouldn't be an issue. Whereas if there's a new guest who, like I've had, I'd probably say out of every, twen every 25 guests I book, maybe every 15, more so now, when I was earlier, it was a lot more. But one in 20 to one in 50 guests do end up cancelling um, yes. for one reason or another, which is fine. But then out of that, probably about a quarter of them, if they cancel once, there's a chance they're just never going to rebook ever again. Either they just go completely dead on emails and that's fine, or sometimes I've had a couple of times I've agreed to a guest because they approach me and I generally do have to say no to some people, but sometimes I'm like, you know, I'll give this person the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, they don't have the biggest social media following. Not that that's always an important thing, but if it's not something that I'm super interested in, it's like, well... If you're trying to come on my show because you want exposure, I feel like I should get a degree back if I'm not reaching out to you because I find you as an interesting individual to pull you in. There has to be a degree of back and forth, but sometimes I'm like, oh, this person seems nice. 
and then they become a nightmare and then trying to book anything with them is a nightmare and they're just difficult with this and difficult with that and then there's a point occasionally i'll speak to megan and i'll be like i just kind of hope this person cancels because i can't really be bothered <laughs> and then sometimes they cancel or they i've had times they just don't show up where they agree to a time and they never show up and i'm like okay i'll send them one email to be like did you get the day wrong time wrong sometimes that happens that's fine but sometimes they just don't get back to me and i'm like well i got my wish bit of a waste of my time i wish i hadn't written all those notes about them but i didn't necessarily want to talk to them that much they've not made the effort i can take a step back but because of that i'm like i'm always conscious because i had early on i was like oh i'm really excited to talk about this guest and then it doesn't happen and then it's like oh i've kind of disappointed myself and the audience whereas if you don't mention it and then suddenly it's like i've got a recording with this or when you're like quiet with beer nuts and then suddenly it's like i've got a new film here you go there isn't that worry so i I completely understand where you're coming from in that regard in a very long winded way to talk about myself is uh yeah i totally get that with projects so i do appreciate you being honest well the the last thing you want to do is make a dicky of yourself let's be honest so you know, you want to try. I mean, I make a dick of myself in real life as as much as I, you know, all the time. So if there's an opportunity to not do that, I'm going to take it because I do it enough as it is. So yeah, but look, I do have so- a solid plan coming up. Uh, like I say, there's just a couple of folks who are still away because I, <laughs> I I get really annoyed because I'm terribly impatient. It's a fault that I've got. I'm aware of it, but I'm doing nothing to improve myself. So uh, so I'm terribly impatient. And I, I wanted to get the project that I want to do now, I wanted to get it started sort of end of December, but of course it's Christmas time and I don't have like family and shit. So I'm like, well, I don't care. Let's get started. And people are like, we're on holidays, buddy. We, we, don't, we don't care. We, we have people we love that we want to spend time with you can wait. And I'm like, oh, so that just means that I have to, uh, I have to wait for a little bit of time. So, uh, yeah. And it's not, it's not good. I don't, uh, I don't handle waiting. You know, when you see, cause I love my sport and you know, when they interview like an injured athlete sitting on the sidelines and, and the reporter will always ask them, you know, are you a good watcher? And nine out of 10 times the athlete will go, no, I wish I was out there playing. That's me. That's 100% me. I, I'm terrible. Like if I was an athlete, being injured and sitting on the sidelines would drive me insane. I want to, I want to be in the action always. So that's just who I am. So when it comes to this sort of stuff, I want to just go, 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 go. So it's frustrating when you know you're just halt, waiting for just someone to email you a response back with a yes or a no. You know, just ah, oh, get on with it. But uh, <laughs> that's life, man. What can you do? That's just how life works. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Well, Goff, we'll wrap it up here. It's always delightful chatting with you. And obviously watching couples therapy and kidnapping was as fun as it always is. It's always a great fun just to set aside a bit of time, watch some of your films and write a couple of funny notes to them. And I say to people, you know, definitely check out the trailers on YouTube and the other fun beer nuts uh, content, including the Hawaiian shirts uh, video as well, which is the important announcement on beer nuts. You've got to make sure you go check that out. It's just a bit of fun, some super guts of some Hawaiian shirts over the Beer Nuts uh, Productions uh, back there's, catalog. There's some great, there's some, some great Hawaiian shirts. you got to, hey, credit where credit's due, there's some absolutely killer Hawaiian shirts in that in that montage, is there not? There's 100%, especially some of the ones that Craig wears are very loud, and I very much appreciate them. <laughs> did, you, did you notice, I'm not too sure how much, you might have to go back and have a look, but he's actually in couples therapy, uh, the tie that he's wearing. Did you notice the tie? I don't recall off the top of my head. I will have to go back to check it. What about this tie? Yes. It's, it's a great tie. It's uh, like playing cards and stuff on a tie. So mm. it's like a, a Hawaiian tie almost. It's fabulous. <laughs> Well, that's going to be the next thing, isn't it? In a year or two, you're going to be... There's another very important <laughs> announcement. It's the very loud ties we have on Beer Nuts. And it'll be all the crazy ties that you have. <laughs> um, so is there any sort of final words um, to say to anyone, aside from, you know, obviously check out the YouTube channel, always check those things out. And for me personally, I'd say, if you can only afford one Beer Nuts film this year, for me personally, I'd say Couples Therapy. If you want the most amount of laughs out loud go for that one the sketches in it are absolutely fantastic obviously get them both we want you to you know support uh, golf and beer nuts as much as you can the education system couples therapy and kidnapping but if you can only scrape the pennies together and get one me personally i'd say couples therapy that's that's the star of the show for me personally but golf is there anything else you want to say to our lovely viewers before we end this call i'll just just uh like i say you do beernutsproductions.com get the obligatory plug in at the end as well so 
everything that I've done. So Couples Therapy was actually my 27th film and everything always remains up on the website. So even films that I did five or six years ago. So if you haven't gone to Beer Nuts Productions before, uh, you can scroll through and uh, check out all of the trailers for all the films and see whatever you want to download, whether it be Couples Therapy, the latest one, or something we did many years ago. Everything is still up there. Same with the audio downloads, the podcast. It's all up on uh, beernutsproductions.com, plus obviously all the social media. So if you just type Beer Nuts Productions into whatever social media thing you're on, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of it, we're, we're all over the place. So just, uh, yeah, Beer Nuts Productions. So that's all you need to know. Absolutely perfect, as always. And yeah, all the links will be in the description, as they always are. And I'll put the nice old list of Goff's other appearances, because this is your first time listening to Goff. You've got, I think, another five or six hours of us talking on a genuine chit chat. So you can just have a whole day of hearing me and Goff talking about his movies. Luck- lucky them i know they could do that and then they can go to beer nuts watch all the behind the scenes docos all the trailers they can watch the uh the actual doco about your life that you made as well which kind of somewhat started off uh some of our interactions and things online loads of great content you can get for free and golf's podcast all of those things and once you consume all of that sort of content or bits and pieces of it you go i want to contribute financially to beer nuts go to the website buy some of the movies buy couples therapy and book club they're my two and i think wedding i think couples therapy book club wedding they're probably my three my three top beer nuts but they're all fantastic always great uh speaking with you golf it's always fun uh watching your videos and the amazing amount of content that you create and uh, i look forward to seeing what you've got planned on 2023 it's going to be good fun and this conversation is going to be released um I think within 24 hours is probably pushing it, but it's going to be within, it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, so it's going to be Sunday. So yours is it's first one of uh, 2023, first full one. So I think this is the quickest turnaround of you coming on the show and it being released. Because normally you're like, when's it coming out? And I'm like, a couple of weeks or a little, while. give me a little bit of time. So with the impatience Again, thing coming I'm in, impatient. it's like, yeah, go for it. Well, <laughs> this is quick. I don't think there's a quicker turnaround possible than a day before. So you get your wish, Goff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's like I told you, I'm childishly impatient. So you've uh, you've done me well, Mike. I appreciate it very much. And uh, thank you as always for having me on the show. I genuinely do appreciate our genuine chit chats. You're a, you're a great supporter of mine and of obviously uh, independent, entertainment as well so well done you my good man thank you so much good sir i'll make sure i post all about this on social media i'll tag you as i always do uh, and obviously i'll email you as well with the links and that sort of stuff but yeah just thank you off it's always a delight and we'll talk to you very soon so thank you listeners <laughs> yes and happy new year yes happy 2023 <laughs> <laughs>